This meeting is being recorded. So a very warm welcome to all participants of the Satyam Yoga Conclave. Welcome to the second session of this first Yoga Conclave. And today we have very special guests who will be a part of the Conclave and who will share their experiences and knowledge with us. I will request Hemaji to kindly introduce all of them to us. Namonarayan, everybody. Namonarayan Swamiji. Uh, we have four special participants. We have Trivikram and uh, Krithi, and they are in middle school. And Bhargavi and Atharva are uh, getting ready to graduate and go to college. So we are in a treat for um, getting information from all of them about themselves. And uh, it's going to be very interesting listening to them, their perspective on life. And they are also going to ask Swamiji one question at the end that they are looking an answer for. So I'm going to start with Trivikram. I talked to him for a few minutes. So he wants to be a neurosurgeon and because he wants to help people with dementia. And uh, I don't know what to say. It is excellent idea and we wish him all the best. So Trivikram, you're on and go ahead and tell us about yourself. You're muted, my dear. Yeah. So my name is Trivikram. I'm in seventh grade. I live in Ashburn, Virginia. I'm going to tell you uh, my experience. There are only a couple of friends who I have that are on my frequency and level that can understand what I say and like why I say it. I'm, in elementary school, I had a big group of friends. About six to 10 people were good friends with me. But now in middle school, everyone splits apart. And so I don't have as many friends now. I feel left out in the group sometimes because they talk about things that I don't even know. They use bad words, which foul language that I don't want to use. And to them, it seems cool. So I'm not part of any cool group. And nor do I watch, no, I don't watch nor discuss anything about sports. I'd rather instead just play the sport and get good at it, like basketball or chess or tennis. Kids think I'm a serious person that only focuses on studies, nothing about sports, a person who just doesn't have fun, which in fact is um, not true at all. <clears throat> and since I'm not tall, <clears throat> um, that's one of the reasons kids don't want to play with me during recess because they don't want a short person to be on their team. So I just feel left out in the group at recess most of the time. That must be really tough. Yes. So how do you cope with it? Um, I cope with it by now what I'm doing. It's not a permanent solution at all. But with the friends that I have normally, I just play with them. But even they talk behind my back. I don't know if it's good or not. And some of them don't even like me, so. But I just deal with it. What is your initial reaction, Trivikram, when you find out, is it anger, it is sadness, it is disappointment? It's all of those three at once. All of those, okay. Yeah. 
because I'm angry that That's they talk behind my back. And now I'm sad because I realize that they're not real friends. Yes. That's very natural. And do you walk away from situations like that? Um, yeah, normally I just, uh, if, if people, if I know I can't play with a group of people, I just join another group. Mm -hmm. Or I just play by myself. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good idea to go and play with other kids who are accepting. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah. Okay. So is that your uh, issue that you want Swamiji yeah, to talk I about? want to talk. I want uh, Swamiji to know that about my experience. Yeah. And you had mentioned that you would like and, to be a neurosurgeon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I would like to be a neurosurgeon when I grow up. And you chose that because, why did you choose neurosurgery? Because my grandmother and my, yeah, only my grandmother, she had dementia before, um, she passed away and I want to find a cure for dementia or at least a vaccine for dementia so that no other grandparent has to deal with it anymore. That's so nice. That is so nice. Thank you. Really beautiful. Good goal and uh, it's going to help a lot of people because a lot of people are suffering from dementia at this point and You will be the best one, Travikram. Yeah, I will. I'll try to be the best one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Could we move to Kriti? Hello, my name is Kriti. I'm in seventh grade and one of my aspirations is to become a doctor because I'm interested in helping people. I think I understand people really well and I can read their thoughts and emotions. And I would probably like to become a doctor who helps with bones because I've like had a fracture before and mm -hmm. I just remember how much it hurt and how much help they were to me when they gave me my boot and my crutches. A problem that I struggle with a lot would also be friendship for me. There is a standard in our school for beauty. For girls especially, you have to be thin, you have to be tall, you have to wear makeup, and you have to be into fashion and wear fashiony clothes. See, I'm not interested in that things. And no matter what clothes I buy, the kids there are never going to like me because I'm not very tall or very thin. So I feel like really left out. And there are already friend groups there and I've tried to join them and they just push me away and mm -hmm. they talk bad behind my back and it hurts my feelings so much. I just, I don't know what to do. Yeah, that's, that's a really tough situation. Has it been uh, uh, earlier also or is it in high school? I think it's been like most of the time. Oh, oh. Even in elementary school? Wow. Yes. There, there are girls like that who yes. hold that standard for friendship? Yes. Mm. Yeah, that's... So how do you deal with that situation at present? Um, well, it's definitely not the best, but... Since I don't really have anyone else, I still try to follow behind them because I feel sad if I'm just alone. But it's like, I don't know why I do that because they're just like letting me tag along like a puppy dog while they sit and talk bad behind me. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But I have no one else, so I'm not really sure what to do. Yeah, that's 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 very tough. Do you have a Asians in your school or only Europeans? Mostly Asians. Mostly Asians. Yes. Okay. We'll we'll see how we can address this issue because it does seem to be a very uh, prominent and very difficult uh, issue. So let's uh, deal with that. Anything else you would like to share with us, Kriti? Um, what is your favorite subject, Kriti? Oh, I love biology. Yeah. Okay. Biology is super fun for me. And I play piano. I started ah. oh. maybe nine months ago. <clears throat> so quite early, but I love it so much. That's great. That is great. Okay. Okay. And what makes you happy and what, uh, you know, what are your hobbies? Uh, my hobbies, I like to crochet with yarn. I made ah. scarves and hats for my family out of yarn. I love that. Um, also, another hobby is I like to play with Rubik's Cubes. I can solve one under 30, 30 seconds. So wow. <laughs> I practice a lot to get faster. That's fast. <laughs> when did you start playing with Rubik's Cube? Maybe more one and a half years back. Okay. It used to be there a long time back and then it made yeah. a comeback. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Another thing that makes me happy is my pet. I have a pet ah. bird. Oh. Okay. What is What's it? What's the name of your bird? His name is Pikachu. Pikachu. Okay. Does he talk to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is a parrot? Yes. Oh. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Kriti. Thank you, Kriti. Thank you. you have some very interesting parts of you, and thank you for sharing with us. And uh, you are going to be the best biologist, um, orthopedic the surgeon. Yeah, the doctor dealing with bones, and uh, we all need that. As I get older, I know that, that the bones get weaker and uh, you're going to take care of a lot of people. Good luck to you. Thank and you. we enjoyed listening to you. Thank you. Thank and you. you are a beautiful girl. <laughs> Thanks. So next we will have Bhargavi Traina. Hello, Bhargavi. Hello. Swamiji forwarded the write-up that you sent him. I'm totally, totally impressed. Thank you. Um, pardon me? Sorry? I thought you said something. I, I'm totally impressed. And uh, you have your uh, mind in the right direction. You are an artist and I have a lot of respect for artists. Um, okay. <laughs> and uh, you are a freelance already working with uh, small companies. Yeah. That is, that is, and you are looking at your uh, college entrance to NID and NIFT. I didn't understand that. Could you expand on that? Um, NID is a National Institute of Design with, I think, okay. the main base being in Ahmedabad in India. And okay. NIFT is National Institute of Fashion Design. So I'm more looking towards fashion design and um, movie making. But I mean, at this point, wherever it takes me, I'm excited. So. Okay. Yeah, it is an exciting field. Um, when you say design, are you talking about uh, graphic design? Um, I mean, honestly, I personally feel like design is kind of more mainstream now like product design and you know just general design overall so i want to go into movie making and set design specifically uh okay. whereas if i'm talking about more design otherwise fashion design as i mentioned okay okay 
you you have one sentence there that i didn't quite understand i have learned from life is that it is unexpected yeah i mean um well i mean i've been doing a lot of things ever since i've been the littlest child so and i've done i think 20 different things so far and here i am doing art out of nowhere i was initially prepa- uh, preparing to become an athlete and now here i am <laughs> on my desk i think 8 hours a day just sketching so uh-huh. i mean yeah a lot of turns here and there ups and downs so i mean that's what i mean by unexpected okay now i understand thank you and uh, you say that it is very stressful working for these people in the small companies and uh, you say that uh, you feel like adjusting to the you know to the second um so you know uh, ahead of yourself so what what is your thought behind that i mean um i i've been doing art ever since i've been very little around the age of 5 6 so okay. um it's been like growing up my hobby and now that i'm taking it more seriously and being self taught first of all i've been yeah. more used to working around my comfort level and what i want to do uh but now that i'm freelancing and working with different companies almost every day um it sometimes gets slightly stressful because you're focusing on their needs and not yours um mm-hmm. and you know it's always what they want and you know their opinions matter the most of course because you're working for them so sometimes it gets slightly uncomfortable because you want to put your point of view out there and you know tell them ki i think this is better but then they don't usually appreciate it especially if you're this young and if you're this new to it so that gets slightly stressful but i mean it's all part of the learning so yeah <laughs> you have already figured it out that it is the life is up and down and uh, you do go through stressful times and uh, is there anything else that you want us to know about you i mean um, i don't necessarily know what to say specifically but um, i think i'd like to take this moment to maybe appreciate this entire thing that swami ji is doing and um, i mean i've been helping him out with a few um study camps in pune and i think it's just been a whole learning process for me itself um you know understanding kids because i want to grow up and do something in psychology plus arts and you know combine mm-hmm. them in a way so and specifically child psychology so it's mm-hmm. been a great experience just you know working around this whole thing and interacting with new people like you and just being a part of sessions like this so wonderful just for information of everybody uh, bhargavi toyna has been teaching there is a uh, activity which we have taken up teaching uh, young kids in the slums near uh, pune and uh, she and her friends have uh, taken it up and they are doing a marvelous job and i mean i have never seen anybody explain the concepts of science and mathematics through arts they did it beautifully i mean it was really uh, and the way uh, they connect with the children the children uh, respond back is really so so heart uh, you know it, it fills the heart with joy so congratulations and thank you bhargavi thank you that is fantastic i have i have worked with young children for 35 years i was a first grade teacher forever and ever and they keep you young and they give different perspective and uh, you understand life through their eyes and it is wondrous that uh, in what you can see through their eyes and good luck to you bargavi thank you and and what is the issue that you want swami ji to address today is it your stress and you you mentioned meditation and also breathing exercises that help you with your sleeping pattern and so is that what you want swami ji to address today or do you have anything else in mind yeah i mean uh, nothing that comes to my mind other than that at this moment but i mean again as with art and a lot of other things it's um, sleeping <laughs> my sleep schedule even as a teenager is slightly messed up 
um, <laughs> and uh, I think because that's been going on for so long, uh, it's hard for me to just close my eyes sometimes and get into peace. Um, so breathing exercises and all that have really helped me. And I think if Swami can maybe expand on that, the session would be really helpful. Sure, sure. We'll do that. Thank Very you. nice. Thank you, Bhargavi. Atharva, could you turn your video uh, on so that uh, others can also see you? Uh, I actually don't have a device right now, so I can't. Okay, no problem. No problem. No problem. Uh, so, hello, everyone. I'm Atharva. I'm 17 and um, I'm studying. Can you speak design. a little bit higher? We can't hear you clearly. <laughs> Hello, is it better? Hello? Yeah, now we can hear you. Yeah. Um, so, hello, everyone. I'm Atharva. I'm 17 and I'm studying for design as well. Um, I'm in the same class as Toyna. We're studying together. Um, I'd say um, I'm focusing on my finals exam recently. They're in next year, Jan. Um, and yoga and meditation, I have honestly haven't tried yet due to the lack of proper guidance. So I'd really love to know more about it because um, I feel it could really benefit me in my life. Um, apart from that, um, I often find myself demotivated or stressed out due to my work. Um, it is hard for me to stay disciplined and be productive. Another problem I'd say is um, I often end up comparing myself to my friends, to their artworks, for example, as I haven't been doing art since my childhood. I've started recently, so I'm not the best at it. I, so I basically end up comparing myself. So, uh, yeah, I'd love to know more about meditation and how it would help me get through these problems. Just a quick question, Atharva. Uh, you said that sometimes you compare yourself with others. Yeah. So uh, what is, in that comparison is something which you feel is inappropriate. So just I can understand that better. Um, I feel I shouldn't compare myself to others. I should compare myself to how I, how I was before, like in the past. It's basically their artwork. For example, mm. we've given the same assignment, but I'm not at, uh, I'm not that good at it like them. Okay. 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 Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Anything else you would like to add? Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We <clears throat> wish you the best in your final exams, Atharva. Thank you. So Hemaji, would you like to uh, share your experience as a teacher over 35 years and how you look at these uh, problems which have come? So a teacher's perspective is always very helpful. Um, it's uh, They are not experiencing anything new, Swamiji. I have seen it in uh, first grade children throughout and... Uh, I have seen it in my own five grandchildren, and it is a very common problem of uh, making friendship. And um, um, so I, I can understand where they say that I'm alone at times. And, uh, you know, children do not know how to take the next step and deal with that issue. They come to the teachers. And then we, we play the mediator and then talk to whoever hurt the feelings and who got hurt. And for the temporarily you do that. And then again, you know, sometimes the children do change and understand that, yeah, I shouldn't do that. And they become good friends. I have seen that too. 
So it is a very um, delicate situation where um, teachers cannot interfere too much either. But uh, yeah. you know, you you can talk like uh, on a superficial level. You cannot go too much deep into. You can be at the best. You can be like a catalyst. Yes. So you know, we have seen that. And of course, the other, uh, the uh, Kriti and uh, Trivikram mentioned that. And uh, also, you know, that comparing to other children, that is uh, something that we all do, not, not just the children, as an adult, as an old person, sometimes, you know, we all do that. And uh, it, it takes time for them to get out of that and accept themselves as they are and then work as uh, I think Atharva mentioned that uh, you compare yourself with how you were yesterday and how you are today and how you are going to be tomorrow. That will be a better solution for them, but it takes some time to understand that. Um, the stress level, I have seen it in my grandchildren when the workload is uh, uh, too high. They, they all like to work and I admire that in Atharva and uh, uh, Bhargavi that they, they are uh, going and going out and working for somebody else and there's no experience like that for young people. The, the social skills, um, it, it is very beneficial to them but it also comes with some of these issues of uh, stress and, uh, you know, um, um, Bhargavi mentioned the time management and that is also there. You don't know how to juggle your time to make everybody happy. You cannot please everybody, but at the same time, you are expected to do that. So that that is uh, something um, understandable and uh, I'm going to listen to you, how you are going to help these four children, Swamiji. Thank you. So a warm Namunarayan to everyone. And I must say, I was touched. And also I had a lot of inferiority complex when I heard all of them. When I was their age, I didn't know anything of anything. We were just, uh, you know, moving along. But today's children, they are far more matured in this aspect. And that's a wonderful thing. You see, childhood is one of the best moments in life. Because we are growing up. Our bodies are growing up. Our mind and mental faculties are growing up. And uh, we are very pliable. We can mold ourselves in any direction. And we are very resilient also. Today, if somebody insults me or says ill about me, Oh my God, for one week, I will be thinking about it and I'm going, it's not going to go out of my mind. But in children, they will fight and within minutes, they have forgotten and they have moved on. This is a very important quality. They are in connection with their inner self much more than we adults are. So to all the children, not only four of you, but to all the children, please don't forget that and don't miss that out. The beauty is in maintaining that inner connection and that comes so naturally to all of you. That is something which you should not let go. And as we are growing up, we undergo lot of lot of stress, lot of stress. Let me try and address this issue first because that is the simplest. You see this glass, uh, this uh, plastic bottle. If I crush the bottle, I compress it with some force and crush the bottle. But if I take a mug of ceramic and try to apply the same force, 
nothing happens right what is the basis of this the basis is that if i apply a small force the molecules inside plastic are able to exert an equal and opposite force and therefore there is no impact which is seen but when i increase the force the crumbling or crushing begins with a mug you can have more if you have a uh, cube of wood it is even harder if you have a cube of concrete it is even harder so stress is that force which applies compressing or a shearing fo force on an object di distorting it or crushing it <clears throat> in our lives stress is something which comes from either outside or from our mind inside which disturbs our focus our sense of centeredness unlike other inanimate objects like the plastic bottle or the ceramic mug which cannot change the ability of putting a force out if it can if a plastic bottle can put out 10 units can go ahead and become 11 units or 15 units but we as humans have ability to increase the inner resilient force which does not allow us to crumble so i feel that press we should make use of and convert this stress into u stress that is bad stress which is harmful for us into good stress now for that we need to increase our inner innate abilities our inner strength when we have good nutrition we improve the strength of the body in the same way when we have good positive constructive thoughts good positive constructive habits then we are able to improve the strength of the mind so when we have this episode of stress we should convert that into our ability to improve our capabilities it is only when we are stressed out that we come up with amazing solutions if everything is normal then the creativity doesn't come forth and to do that there are various practices especially since both of you are into the field of creativity 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 is manifesting something which did not exist bringing out possibilities where none and for that we need to be able to have the ability to project to laterally think and to compare from different aspects more importantly it is the ability to connect within because inside us we have the fountain of intuition we have the fountain of knowledge and it is that ability that you can connect into and this we can certainly by the practices of yoga nidra and pratyahar asanas pranayams are of course important and useful but in addition to that we need to bring in these practices when you do that then you are actually working about the abilities you bring harmony into yourself allowing us to connect deep within so uh, i would suggest 
that every day for 5 minutes any time in the day sit down with your eyes closed and first become aware of the whole body top of your head to your toes then become aware of your breath and then in front of the closed eyes you are able to see a dark screen and in this dark screen bring that thought which had come in your mind and you examine it and you visualize yourself enacting drawing the sketch drawing that and as you do that you will see over a period of time amazing thoughts amazing possibilities amazing combinations start coming up there are, have been no artists creative people they close their eyes and they go into an inner space and when they go into that inner space they some suddenly communicate with a higher uh conundrum of information of knowledge and many things start coming up spontaneous what appears spontaneously is actually a process this inside so i would say you should practice this 10 minutes 5 minutes in a day whenever you want second thing is when you feel stressed if possible do some physical exercises or physical movement even if it is just jumping on the spot or hands and up and down that is also okay and then place your palm on your abdomen and breathe in and out long deep breaths and as you breathe in expand your abdomen breathe out contract your abdomen expand contract expand contract this simple practice of abdominal breathing connects centers within our brain our hormones balances our mental patterns the body and when there is a balance and connection between the three the stress comes down and solutions start coming up so uh, in addition to various things which uh, would be beautiful if you can practice every day half an hour or alternate days depending what is important is when you start you are as uh, bhargavi mentioned that she sits and uh was a day she is doing some sketching before you do that just sit down and either chant om or plug your ears and just mm, just do ramari pranayam and then begin you will see your abilities automatically start coming up and every 45 minutes to 1 hour please get up stretch yourself do conscious abdominal breathing 5 minutes and then get back into the flow you will see your abilities come up the way uh atharva said that sometimes we feel demotivated but then when we feel demotivated sit back and observe why we feel demotivated we need to observe ourselves a bit more because many a times many a time it happens that the problem brings a solution within it only if we look into it so first thing you know you feel demotivated sit down and observe in the mental screen replay the entire event oh this is happening and then this is followed by this that th- second thing third thing fourth thing fifth thing then suddenly your mind will come up with a solution if not then you need to just let, you have compared it you have observed it you have done everything just let it go and continue with your other activities you will have an inspiration 
because when we work on something here and then let it go it goes deep within and our unconscious works on it and throws up a solution so this is a smart way of connecting deep within allowing that creativity to come up atharva also mentioned about comparing comparing is not sometimes it comparing can cause lot of demotivation sometimes observing others and comparing with them allows us to come up which we had not thought about we are able to learn so therefore we should always keep our eyes and ears open observe don't yes, compare sir. and when somebody compares you with others of course it is painful of course it is uh, uncomfortable but what is very essential is that through that comparison you make use of that comparison as an analysis and you start asking pointed questions to that person that way you are making use of that situation because the situation is there in front of you you like it or not somebody is going to compare you and then you are going to feel bad and you are going to feel even more demotivated why not we make use of that situation he starts saying oh your picture is not good you know your color uh, combination is not good and then you observe uh you mean to uh this color combination would have been better or another color combination would be or the texture should have been different but don't you think so you have utilized a negative situation and converted it into something which is positive because we don't live in utopia where everything is the way we want it especially when we are starting out we have to uh dance to the tune of others but it is here that our creativity comes to the fore that person might be wanting to demotivate me purpose but i can make use of that into a positive aspect it is up to me how to make positive use of it so one of the things which i have found out is when somebody is criticizing comparing uh, demeaning us just turn it round into oh you think that this is the thing or oh, perhaps this could happen that could happen and many times i have seen when you shift it from person to the situation the person also suddenly brings out ideas or gets stumped totally it is a no what Uh, to do what not to do and when they are uncertain then very shortly they start following your lead and then it becomes a positive conversation yes bhargavi uh i have a follow up question for that if that's okay so um what you're mentioning right now is ki when there's a second person criticizing you or you know pointing out ki maybe this is not good or maybe that is not good enough or whatever but let's say i'm uh, let's say maybe i'm scrolling through pinterest or any other app trying to find references for my artwork or for example if atharva and i are in class itself and no one is pointing out to it us maybe let's say i comp- compare my work to atharva's and his is simply better than mine i automatically get that you know consciousness ki maybe i'm not good enough and maybe he's just better at this in that alone moment when you know no one is technically pointing it out how do you battle that because most of the times it's not what others say but mostly when you is from our sense many times it uh, comes what happens is that uh, due to multiple reasons uh, we many times have uh, a low self esteem and whatever we do we always think that uh, mm, no it's not good enough and when we observe or like as you said this is much better 
so uh, that time i feel very low i feel very upset i feel sad i feel very unwanted so for a few moments allow yourself to wallow in that hi acha ye ko thoda le bas double le le because when you i will request everybody to kindly mute uh, mute oh, themselves ma to hum se bana ke chal ko mere beta na jaldi se banao so uh, for a few moments live in that moment live in that emotion feel very bad feel very sad feel very upset feel very down and then after that come around and say oh this is there now how can i change it i am feeling very bad and i don't want to feel very bad what are the options so we have the negativity which is there that negative force is there and now we are just channelizing that force okay what are the options what is it that is making me sad oh see his color combination is better uh, his uh, sketching is better okay how can i we are now allowing the same force which was pushing us down to push us up this takes a little bit of a effort but uh, it is very easily possible within a week or 10 days of conscious thinking and that is why it is very essential when the feeling of uh, sadness or uh, being compared and therefore we are down comes then don't negate it the moment you negate that feeling it is going to grow and grow and grow first acknowledge it and live in that moment you have allowed that emotion to express itself the moment the emotion expresses itself much of the steam of the emotion comes down then you use the emotion oh i am so bad so how can i be better this is a question which i ask oh there is no way what is it he is better at how has he done it better so instead of focusing on i am bad i am saying how is the difference and then after that say okay how can i change what do i do what do i not so i am just giving one example but this way we have to try and convert the downward pushing force into an upward pushing force much in the same manner as we use the sails while we are in the sea the moment you raise the sail and you turn the sail you can to a great degree modify how which direction the ship is going to uh, you know proceed what have you done something which was pushing you down you have just converted it and made it you have harnessed that energy whenever there is any negative energy please don't suppress it harness it and harnessing takes a little bit of time but it is possible with a little bit of practice it is easily possible maybe you might need to write things down initially then you will start and then after some time it becomes the second nature so that is how we can use distress and convert it into you stress and now the other aspect which trivikram and kriti brought out at the outset we must know that we human beings are social creatures we are not individual creatures a tiger is an individual creature you will never see a group of tigers going along but you will never see a lion being alone a lion is always a pride of lions you never see dogs or jackals or hyenas alone or even elephants they are always in a group in the same way we are in a group so uh, first thing is that the social abilities need to be brought up in earlier days life in the family used to be multiple people so therefore social skills were uh, inculcated very naturally now with nuclear families that doesn't happen 
So we have to bring in the social skills consciously. As I had mentioned in the beginning, at such a young age, Vikram is a black belt in karate. What, at what age did you become a black belt, Vikram? I became a black belt at around nine years old. Ah, so I mean, can you imagine a person who is so uh, gifted? But we now need to use these gifts and convert them into a different aspect. We have a problem in front of us. Kruti mentioned it from a different perspective. Trivikram mentioned it from a different perspective. But the problem is the same. And in fact, this problem is not only for children. This problem is for everyone. Friendship. Friendship is one of the most prized possessions of humans. And it is equally rare. So we cannot have heart to heart friends all over. They are very rare. So you'll find them rarely. But we can always have some degree of I am friends with him on this aspect. I am friends with somebody else on another aspect. We are a multifaceted personality. And tell me what do you like in your friend, Kriti or uh, Trivikram? When you had a friend, now or in primary school or at any point of time, what is it that makes you want to be friends with that person? Um, well, um, they're very nice and you could trust them. Uh -huh. You need to trust them for them to be your friend. They like you for who you are and not how you look or how you pretend to be. And a real friend doesn't say anything bad about you at first. They might tease you saying like, oh, you're so short. <laughs> but at that point, they know and you also know it's just a joke. They're mm. just teasing you to be funny. Yeah. <clears throat> so and that is what a when, when you are when what you look into a friend is somebody who can listen to you, who can accept you as who you are. So there is something which attracts you to the person, correct? In the same manner, we need to have that quality within us, which will attract others to us. Wherever there is honey or wherever there is fragrance, the honeybees automatically swarm there. So always, always remember, we need to have a quality and we need to be able to project it appropriately. If we project what we are not, then we are manipulative. But sometimes it is very essential that we make a projection so that we can improve our qualities to reach that projection. That is not being manipulative. So first thing is that we need to look into ourselves. What are the qualities which I have? I have certain qualities and I don't have certain qualities. So what are the qualities which I have and how can I make them, uh, make others be aware of it without really tom tomming about it? How I can get people to, so this is something which you have to think about, which means you have to know your strengths. What is my strength? What is my weakness? What is my ambition? What is my need? You have to spend some time thinking about this, pondering about it. Then you have to think, how can I convert my weakness into a strength? Suppose I have a weakness. How can I harness that weakness and convert it into something which is useful for me. It is possible. All we have to do is we have to sit down, step back a bit. Because when we have our 
head straight in then nothing is visible you have to step back then you have a wider perspective so sit down and close your eyes and just think about what are my strengths what are my weaknesses what are my ambitions what are my needs how can i convert my weakness into an ambition how can i align my uh, weakness, weakness into a strength and ambition and need that is the first step the second in my school i have people who are having certain qualities and they don't want to be friends with me like you said and they say mean things to me next what you need to do is you need to sit down and analyze their strength weakness ambition and need and when you know their strengths their weaknesses their ambitions and their needs then you know how to approach them when i approach them in this manner that person is going to respond so that is how we have to uh, analyze the situation but first and foremost we need to believe in ourselves when people bully us or like what both of you mentioned people say mean things to us it is very natural to feel very sad and upset and when that happens over a period of time it builds up and it builds up and it builds up and it reduces our self confidence and self esteem kriti you used a very powerful word that you follow them and they uh, make like like a puppy yes that happens only when our self esteem has gone down and when our self esteem has gone down then trust me nobody will be friends with me they will just make use of me they will show they know that oh she wants to be friends so they will act as if they are friends with you get what they want to do from you and throw you away again which again hurts me and takes me down so therefore first and foremost slowly build your self confidence how do you do that every day sit down close your eyes and visualize the quality you want to be i am confident i am smart i am you know popular whatever i want to and just visualize that in my mind and slowly visualize it in great detail okay i am wearing like this and i am going to school and five people are coming and they are talking to me and they are saying this and they are saying that the greater detail that you visualize over a period of time it starts happening because the subconscious and unconscious mind is gradually directing the mind conscious mind to move in that direction in addition we are already doing this swan analysis so both the things go hand in hand and always remember our weakness i am not so beautiful but what is beauty i'll tell you a small story we had a story when we were in school the title was the most beautiful lady on earth this was a russian story russian folk tale there were children who were uh, playing and one girl got lost and everybody tried to find out who whose daughter it is the child was very young so she didn't know the name of the what is the name of your mother mother so what can we do? so then they said can you tell something more about your mother the daughter said she is the most beautiful woman on earth okay there is something so they sent out trying to find out all the beautiful women they brought no none of them and then there was this lady who came searching she was plump she was slightly short she was not having very great features and the 
daughter ran. There, I told you, my mother is the most beautiful woman in the world. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So therefore, it is up to us to manage the perceptions of others. But how can we manage the perceptions of others if we don't manage our own perceptions? If I reinforce into what they have said, oh, you are hopeless, oh, you are hopeless, oh, you are hopeless. And I keep saying that to me my, time and time again. We are never going to come out of this vicious circle which we are in. To break this vicious circle, first thing, sit down and visualize that you are smart, that you are well liked by others. People are flocking to you and they like you for one quality or the other or the third. And you will see within six months, your entire, entire personality will change. When you have an outgoing personality, when you are full of confidence, you will see people will come to you and say, oh, I would like to be friends with you. It is a work which has to be undertaken. It is not easy, but it is possible. Becoming a doctor is not at all easy. Becoming a black belt uh, at the age of nine, not easy. But it is possible. You have worked hard for it, right? So in the same manner, we have now to shift our energies. And three, four things which I would like you to do. First is observe how the dynamics of interactions take place. Dynamics of interactions are never logical. There are other factors. Observe them. And when you observe them for a period of time, then you will start coming to know, oh, what are the buttons of that person? You know that if you offer fr uh, fruits to specific person, they will be very happy. Or if you help somebody in their school, they will be happy. You know, you have to observe that and then start making use of that flow and that will create a connection. Once you create a connection, then you have to maintain your strength. The moment you let go of your confidence, they will start pulling you out. Then there is no friendship. Friendship is always amongst two people who are attracted to each other. Now attracted, uh, you have to use in a very uh, uh, careful terms. That means two people who like each other. That can happen like two magnets. They can come together or a magnet attracts the iron filings. But if this magnet is covered with a big blanket, it is not going to attract the filings. So we need to take this blanket out, polish the blank, polish the magnet a bit. So then the magnet shines. And so first step, you start observing yourself. What are my strengths? Many times it will happen that you will say, oh, I don't have any strength or I don't have any qualities. That just shows how brainwashed we have become by others. Doesn't matter. So jump to the other side. What are my weaknesses? And then you'll start writing down a long list. And then suddenly you'll see, oh, but this is something which could be a strength. Few days later, you will let this practice of observing yourself and your strengths, weaknesses, ambitions, and needs continue for a week or two. It doesn't happen overnight, but let it happen over a period of time. And then you will see things start changing. You start developing confidence. You know, if I speak to somebody in a specific manner because of your observation, he is going to or she is going to respond in that manner. You start creating your own circle of friends. Because please remember, if you have such lofty goals of becoming a doctor or a scientist or a biologist or whatever, or even an artist for that matter, it is essential that you need to have proper friends. You might have less, but proper. If you, like Trivikram mentioned in the beginning, there are some boys who will use bad words. They will swear. And so it appears to be cool. And that is because 
there was a time when you smoked and you were cool that is how it was projected in the mainstream media yes kriti um so when you say that we should try and find like other people's ambitions and dreams to like try and become their friends the thing is everyone in my class or like because they all already i already know their strengths and if i offer to help them they would just take advantage of me i've done it i've helped them you have to study. observe it you don't have to speak to them you have to observe it yourself every person has got some strength some weakness some ambition some need the ambition is that which will pull suppose uh, somebody is uh, very keen to have this type of a mug and only i have that mug this desire to have the mug is going to pull that person to me that person might not want might not so this is your bar bargaining chip at the lowest level and through that bargaining chip you start getting to know that person and when you start getting to that know that person then you know uh, would you like to have this person as a friend or not if not you drop and you go for somebody else and a third and a fourth but every person has got a good quality there is nobody who has bad qualities only those good qualities might be below the surface maybe we have to scratch and bring that out but uh, we need to observe we don't need to talk to them we just observe that oh if i this girl she loves shoes this girl she loves uh, hair do this girl she loves uh, makeup this girl she will do anything to have a beautiful dress so you are observing them you are understanding them you are understanding their mindset and when you start understanding their mindset then you will know how to approach them and then you approach them from a position of strength it's not very easy but this is a life lesson because as you grow in life grow older you will see success does not depend only on the qualifications which i have success depends on how i can create relationships if i have got friends in multiple places in times of need it is these friends who are going to be my support net so to be able to connect and create friends you need to know that person you need to understand you need to know what ticks for that person what makes him think or what makes her think that way so you need to spend time observing not approaching another person no because then they will make use of you as you rightly pointed out but you observe them and then you strategize how will you make use of the 20 30 40 people you will realize oh these 10 20 i would rather not be friends with so you have you know eliminated them you have a group of 20 amongst them slowly 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 you can cultivate friendship one is friendship which sparks immediately but another is a friendship which is cultivated so this cultivation is important and to cultivate that means you need to tend you need to put water you need to put nourishment you need to, you have to be it's an active process it happens over a period of time it needs strategizing it needs understanding the person so this is something which you will need to make and before doing that first you have to look at your strengths that is crucial that is crucial because i am sure you have got good strengths and uh, when they say that you don't have i mean like when they say they have a certain standard of beauty then by no means do i find you not beautiful i think hema ji you will agree with me in saying that she is indeed quite beautiful isn't she hema ji absolutely i find kriti as a very attractive and a very beautiful in and out beautiful girl it comes through and 
as far as fashion is concerned please remember there was a story one young fellow had to go to a party and uh, as he was on his way out he realized that one of it, his trousers shirt trousers had uh, come off so he didn't have any time so he immediately cut from the curtain and patched it up and he displayed it as the latest fashion and in the next party everybody was wearing that see it was my weakness but i have converted it into a strength oh see this is the latest fashion and nowadays anything and everything can be used as fashion torn clothes uh, funny uh, hairstyles everything that is something which is important i think chitra bhanu has said something one shift in thinking that being used is not bad but it's a proof that you are a person of value will help you make uh, be happier yeah but you see uh here the sad part is that they will make use of you as long as they need it and then chuck you away right now what uh, chitra bhanu has said is also very true if you use the understanding they need this i have that so you don't just give because you want to be a part of that group but they, you know that they don't have it you have it and you slowly cultivate friendship because many times it just needs an incident to cultivate friendship once the initial spark is lit then the friendship develops be confident be sure about yourself and visualize every day spend 10 minutes visualizing yourself to be the person you want to be the person who has so many friends who are true friends and observe and understand and all of that that is something which is very essential visualization ha huh. asan pranayam all those things like if you want to be tall then there are few asans which will help you uh, so you can do that but what is also very important is that you are pulling yourself down i am short i am short i am short i am short you are pulling yourself down even further no go the other way around oh i am tall i am growing taller oh that visualization takes 6 months to 1 year but you will see that in that 6 months to 1 year there will be a change which takes place this is something which we have seen happen to many children it takes a lot of effort but every good thing in life takes effort so i think doing this will be very very useful and the second thing which i feel which is very useful is the practice of yoga nidra yoga nidra is a practice by which we can bring in different qualities within us yoga nidra is a quality by which we can activate the inner strength within us so children should especially practice yoga nidra of course it is relaxing of course it uh, you know uh, refreshes you that's true but more importantly it brings up your uh, creativity it brings up your inner energy and then you will see the abilities start coming up so visualization yoga nidra observation keen observation and analysis strength weakness ambition need these are few takeaways by which you can work throughout your difficulties and learn to convert your problems into your strengths and then you will see you can be the most popular person 
in your school. You can be the most liked person because as I mean, see, so many people are telling, yes, you are gorgeous. There's no doubt about it. It's just that somebody for their, you see, huh, that is another thing which I wanted to tell. Nobody has mentioned this, but I'm sure there will be a lot of bullying which takes place, right? Do you know what is a bully? Who actually is a bully? A bully is a coward who hides behind a strength that person has. He is physically hulky. So he hides, but basically he is a coward. And in my mind, I know I am insufficient. I know I am incapable. And my mind keeps telling that to me. To prove to myself that I am not incapable. The easiest thing is I project it on others and say, see, I am pushing that person down. So I am more capable. That is the weak point of the bully. So whenever there is somebody who is bullying you, stand back and observe. You will find a weakness. And then you have to manipulate that weakness so that if he is a person which you would like to be friends with, gradually friendship develops. Or if you want to uh, neutralize the bully, then you can use that. There was a very valiant, brave freedom fighter. He was from Bengal. He was known as Bagha Jatin. Bagha Jatin means he was a person who had bare, with his bare hands, fought with a tiger, defeated him and come out victorious. So brave he was. Same person he, has, he had told when he was a small child. There was a dog which was chasing him. And this child was full of fear, screaming, Mommy, help, help. He was running. As the child came near the mother, the mother didn't do anything to help the child. She said, why are you running? Turn around, pick up that stick and scare the dog away. The moment the child turned around and took up the stick, the same dog which was charging ran away. You can see that with situations in our lives also. The more we run away from situations, the more strong, the more powerful they become. But the moment you turn around and face the situation, the strength of the situation reduces. This is something which is very, very important. We need to have that courage within us. No, I will face it. When I have that, the strength of the bully comes down. So next time somebody bullies you, don't just slink away, but observe. Uh, don't confront him because we still don't know uh, what the strength of that person is and what the weakness is. So observe that person, understand him. And next time, I knew, I knew of a person who was big bully, but he was damn scared of lizards. The moment a lizard came, true. And I know of a boy who used this fear of the bully to make friends with that person. Initially, he would just send some lizards purposely, he would catch lizards and so. And when the bully would run scared, he would catch hold of that lizard, throw it away. Oh, very good, very good, very good. And a friendship developed. And then they became really good friends. So, uh, you know, there are multiple ways. First thing is know yourself, know your strengths, and then you will make, you will do wonders. No doubt about it. And that is the most important takeaway. Swami Niranjananji, who is today the guiding force behind Bihar School of Yoga, he was just 11 years old when he was sent abroad all alone to teach yoga. And he had gone to Ireland. Ireland in those days was uh, in a very hot spot, lot of civil unrest. 
they were catholics and they were protestants and the catholics used to tell swami niranjananand ji don't go to those protestants come here be with us and the protestants would say don't go to those people stay with us and he would say yes to both and teach both and over a period of time he in that small community brought those people together and they become friends he was having nothing but slowly he started picking up their weaknesses and converted them into something which was beautiful and he made friends with everybody so that is how we need to use these abilities to make improvement in our lives this is not a one day process it takes time but it can certainly be it is getting to 9 o'clock if any other questions anybody would like to say we can take them i think shweta has asked you mentioned about yoga nidra for kids what process should kids follow uh, there a video of yours which kids can follow and do yoga nidra uh, no uh, we will have to create something we will have to create something and it should be a live once we know the children once we know the situation then we should uh, you know when we are looking at this type of a very specific activity then we need to uh, work with people and then develop something the principles are straight they are put in but we need to uh, fine tune it uh, customize it for each person or each uh, quality which has to be used so we can uh, we can take it up separately and work and create something that way okay swami ji So Hema ji, if there are no other questions, should we uh, wrap up? Yeah, it was uh, very informative, and uh, you addressed a lot of issues, Swami ji. Um, I admire these four children who came up and uh, expressed themselves and their concerns. Um, there is one one thought that comes to my mind. um because of my experience of the last 80 years um always always be available to your children and communication is the most important thing between the children and their elders whether it is parents or grandparents um don't be judgmental when they come to you listen to them and understand them and encourage them how to deal with it you may not you may not have all the answers but uh, it will come to you when you listen to them what they are looking for will come from your heart and be supportive of them all the time and to that i would like to say that when you are honest that you don't know the answer but you together sit down and put your heads together your experience their in it innovativeness together they come together and uh, we are able to come up with a solution that will increase the respect of children amongst you you do not always have to know all the answers not possible but the very fact that you say that you don't know the answer but let us sit down and put our heads to it and we can come up with a solution that plays a great role so i think we should do that and uh, with this let us uh, conclude today's session please sit in a comfortable posture hands on your knees in nyan or chin mudra head neck shoulders back in a straight line eyes and mouth gently closed become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes awareness of your head neck shoulders arms chest upper back 
abdomen, lower back, hips, legs, the whole body. Become aware of your breath. Normal, spontaneous breathing coupled with awareness. I am breathing in. I am breathing out. And I am aware. I know I am breathing in. I know I am breathing out. Let this be the form of your awareness for a few moments. Shift your awareness to your eyebrow center, Brumadhyaya. And then bring your awareness to the eyebrow center. Visualize a brightly burning candle flame, this point. And maintaining your awareness on this, we shall chant the mantra Om three times, followed by the Shanti part. Taking in a deep breath. Oh. Oh. Asato ma sadgamaya, tamaso ma jyotir gamaya, mrityor ma mrutam gamaya, sarvesham swasti bhavatu, sarvesham shantir bhavatu, sarvesham purnam bhavatu, Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Loka Samastha Sukhino Bhavantu Om Trambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukamiva Bandhanan Mrityor Mukshiyam Amrathat Om Shanti Shanti, Shanti, and Sultana Mudra. Vameva Mata Chapita Tvameva Vameva Bandhush Chasaka Tvameva Vameva Vidya Dravinam Tvameva Tvameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Tvameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Tvameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Hari Om Hari Om Tatsat Gently rub your palms against each other Place them on the closed eyes Experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes Energizing the eyes Energizing the brain Energizing the whole body and then gently move your palms away. Open your eyes. Aryom. Before we go, I just saw a message from Trivikram. People will say bad things about someone. Uh, about someone almost only because they are jealous of you. That's a beautiful observation, Trivikram. You have you have actually uh, you know cracked half the Code. They are jealous of you. That means you have something which they don't have. Now all it re uh, remains is how you can make them feel a little bit bad about it and more uh, better is how you can help them become that. And then you will see you have a strength they don't. Okay, come on. Let me see. So maybe you can challenge them to something. For, for example, you are good in mathematics. They are not. Come on, let's challenge. And then you say, you teach me mathematics, I teach you this. Uh, sorry, I teach you mathematics, you teach me this. Let's see. So a competition can become a way to be friendship. You have cracked more than half the problem. 
all you have to do is now see how you can depending on the person you can just make use of that because jealousy is a strong emotion they will do anything for it make use of this i am very very proud of all of you and you know uh i really feel that you are in a very beautiful time zone because here at this time in uh, the world there are so many opportunities and so many options which are available which were not available 20 years ago 30 years ago 50 years ago 80 years ago no but you have them and you have so much of uh, capabilities all you need to do is tweak them a little bit and it will be beautiful so with the best wishes for all of you namo narayan hari om tat sat jay ho and we will tomorrow at uh, 7:30 in the morning for the third session of this episode of satyam yog namo namo narayan swami ji namo narayan swami ji namo narayan namo narayan it is a beautiful session very beautiful namo narayan swami ji Namo Narayan Swami ji. Namo Narayan. Yes, the children were really beautiful and <laughs> very nice interaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Namo Narayan. Namo Narayan Swami ji. Namo Narayan. Namo Narayan. Namo Narayan.